How a stranger saved my daughter's life by donating his liver when she was four months old. My name is Chris St. James, and I live in Cape Cod with my wife Sarah and our two children, Carter and Sloan. Carter is two and a half years old, and Sloan was born in April. But our happiness turned into fear when we noticed that she was getting more and more yellow, and her belly was getting bigger when she was two months old. We took her to Boston Children's Hospital for a checkup and got the worst news possible. The doctors told us that she had a rare liver disease called biliary atresia, which means that some of her bile ducts were narrow, blocked, or missing. The disease can be treated if it is found early, but Sloan's case was already advanced and only a liver transplant could save her life. We put her on a waiting list for a deceased donor, but there was no one who matched her. We also asked our family and friends to see if anyone would be willing to be a living donor. A living donor is someone who gives part of their liver to someone else who needs it. The liver is an amazing organ that can grow back to its normal size after being cut. A living donor has to be related or acquainted with the recipient, have the same blood type, and agree to donate voluntarily. One of the people who heard about our situation was Steve Tenney, a police officer from New Hampshire. He knew us through his brother Jake Tenney, who was our close friend. He didn't know Sloan very well, but he decided to sign up as a potential donor after finding out that his blood type matched hers. He went to Leahy Hospital in Burlington to undergo many tests and procedures for a week before being chosen as the ideal donor for Sloan. The doctors took his blood, scanned his CT, and took a sample of his liver to check his compatibility with Sloan. On September 8th, Tenney and Sloan had the liver transplant surgery at two different hospitals. The doctors cut about 20% of Tenney's liver and transplanted it into Sloan, replacing her damaged liver. Her new liver would grow with her, and Tenney's liver would regenerate. The surgery was successful, and Tenney and Sloan recovered well. Tenney went back to work after a while. He also came to visit Sloan in Cape Cod and hugged her in his arms. We called him our hero and expressed our deep gratitude. Tenney said he had no regrets about his decision and advised others to do the same if they had the chance. At 14 years old, I was the target of an assassination attempt by two 16-year-old boys. What happened to me is truly shocking. My name is Desiree Turner, and this is my tragic story. Coulter Peterson and Jason Decker, people I once knew as classmates, had crafted a ruthless plan to kill me just because I had communicated with them over social media too much. Their irrational decision to rid of me their perceived nuisance, was initially planned out with a knife. Coulter brought along a gun. Their plan was set into motion two days after Valentine's Day. Jason sent a message to Coulter suggesting they should proceed with their act. I was asked to meet Coulter by the canal, under the pretext that he was selling me a knife. As I turned around to leave, Coulter shot me in the back. The bullet hit the back of my head, and I fell to the ground. After they left me there, the boys stole my phone, headphones, and dollar fifty-five cash. I was left there hanging precariously between life and death. As the hours passed and I didn't return home, my loved ones began to worry. Close to 1 a.m., friends and family found me unconscious in a field. Thankfully, I was still alive. After being apprehended by the police, Coulter confessed to shooting me. The motive behind his actions was utterly deplorable and unacceptable.